if it's not yeah. true to the, the way you're doing it, like mm-hmm. we were just being generic promoters trying to imitate like your biggest techno nights or anything. We were just looking at what we've seen and we were like, let's just do exactly that. Yeah. And that doesn't get you anywhere. You always be in the shadows or have your try to imitate. So mm. we um oh, fuck it. If we're gonna go out and no do all this, let's just go to a bang and have some fun. And Dolby says, why don't we do a night? I like all the old bam tunes and I think it was all like a kind of, I think it was definitely he says, why don't we do that and I all the kind of throwback stuff and that. And I don't know if he came up with the night for that, the name for the Infrared Bangers. I can't remember how that Infrared Bangers, about. yeah, that was another one. Because is that the video? That, I'm sure you had the video and it was like Darren, uh, Darren Styles or something in Flat One. Yeah, right. oh, we just went all out, man. Like, it was just like a big cathartic release of all the tunes that we'd like kind of grown up with. Um, mm-hmm. And the idea it was just all the tunes you used to transfer through Infrared and the old walking phones. Um, right. And we just wanted to do a night oil them because the monotony, particularly at that time, it was dead serious. Like, house techno disco yeah. was the t- title on every event that you'd ever do. House techno disco, house techno. Yeah, yeah. Was just I, I've, been, I've been guilty of that myself. It's sometimes hard. It's to, hard not to. Yeah. It's hard not to just follow those steps of what you're doing. And it's fine mm-hmm. if you're doing that. Like, there's nothing wrong with it, but mm-hmm. it's hard to stand out, particularly when yeah. in a place like Glasgow where there's loads of big guys already doing stuff and then there's hundreds of small promoters all different sizes and there's loads yeah. of places for it. And there's a bit of a kind of competition for attention, particularly with social media, um, which you can choose to enter or not, but it kind of exists. In- uh, I know, mate, it's, it's a tough one, social media, because... I've, I've been struggling with it recently as well. Like, I feel like with the way social media works now, I've been reading into it a bit as well with Instagram. It's like, if you're not paying to promote what you're putting on and you're not giving money to these companies like Instagram, Facebook, then the, the, the way the, the system works and like the algorithm and stuff, it's, it's not going to favour what you're posting. And so it's mm-hmm. almost like they can control who sees it. They can control the reach that you're getting. And so I... I'm, in, I'm in like a constant battle with myself where I'm like, I do feel like, if I don't put something, for example, if I release a mix on SoundCloud, if I just whack that on SoundCloud, and I, nobody's like nobody's like waking up in the morning going, oh, I'm going to go on his SoundCloud and see what he's posting today. Like I kind of have to to say on social media, this is what I'm doing. But but at the same time, I don't really want to be a part of it. It's it's, it's a difficult medium to try and find a balance. So it's a weird one to do. Like just for the promoting, like we've been stuck with so many times. We're like, how do we promote things different? Yeah. How do we get it out there? And, um, no, I was going to say, you used to do that with us, well, like taking taking the piss out stuff like that. Like it's like um, that. I can't remember the meme that you put up, but it's basically like a young promoter like saying, "Get like keep your eyes." Big things coming or something. Or something. <laughs> Big things coming. <laughs> Big things coming. It's just like I think it was the only part of it. It's like in your dream, it's just a promoter standing over you saying, "Big things coming." I might sleep. My sleep paralysis <laughs> demon. I. Is that <laughs> <laughs> See, all that stuff out just buckles me. You've got to be able to take the piss out of what it is you oh, do of course because you it's no right. people make it serious and it's not yeah, serious. Like, I know. being into it, serious, passion, serious, all that stuff, serious, but what it is yeah, isn't serious. It's, not do it's nightlife, it's fucking events, it's fun, it's music, and it needs to stay that man. Folk, yeah. I get it if you want to get political and that stuff, it, but for me and for us, it's just. I know. Artistic. It's, a, it's even it's mental that we even get to do any of that as a job. I, like, I know. It's a luxury to have these things. And so yeah. we just have fun with it um, and try and take the piss out of it. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what we started like back then when we come up with that in Fred Myers yeah. night. It was that it was just that was when the change happened in us. It was about a year in. And we said, right, we need to adapt and do something different. The night might end, and if it does end, at least we've gave it a go. And it ended yep. up that was a nice mental night. It was like a fucking queued out in the street. Couldn't believe it. We just went Aye. mental, and uh, we'd done a few of them, like parties through the summer. And it was just, it was like a perfect kind of time for you get hands attention, and it broke that monotony of just house techno disco nights that we were doing, and a lot of people were doing. I think because flat one very much was like, I think maybe five promoters a week were in over the month, and it was new, like so it was a different promoter. You'd have one slot a month, but there would be a new promoter every day. You get that promoter would get one slot a month basically. So I'd we'd be the third Wednesday that someone would have a second Wednesday and the first. So you'd have all these promoters, but a lot of them were I mean, maybe not. It felt like a lot of them were just doing the same thing. Aye. And then after I'm not saying we paved the way or anything like that, I don't think yeah, we did. Yeah. But I think other people started figuring things out like aye, maybe we need to change it up a bit and just not do the same monotonous yeah. stuff. Like flat one was a very fun kind of 
free idea place where you could change it up with Experiment what style of music stuff. you're doing, uh, events you were doing, and just have fun with it. So more people started doing that, and it hit a real like boom point of where everyone was so busy. There was all these different like group collectives like us coming out, six or fucking ten DJs still lining up by the decks to do tunes and all their pals there. But it did like that was like a pure rise of the DJ collective. Um, and we enjoyed being a part of that.